So let's just remove the your, um, comments, users, and vote. I don't have any of that, and let's try to load the fixture again. Great. So I have a few fixture, right? And we work on the lab. Um, basically, we should be able to comment and, and like. So it requires signing in. So I'm going to sign up as someone. That's my first account. And now I'm sign sign up. I'm I should be able to like. So we already had this. We can comment. Then this is Ajax, right? And then you can like something, right? So this this uh, number of heart go up. You can unlike it. Go down by one. So what we're doing next is to provide a an option to change the languages, right? To switch from one to another. And the concept we're learning today is called internalization. In the guide, when you start, I encourage you to read through, um, just have a quick look at this guide. Uh, can someone guess why this is called I18N? Does anyone know? Exactly. So there's 18 characters between I and N. So this is a Good way to just shorten it. There's a similar word. It's called localization. Localization, and then it's L10N. So you might see it. Okay. So, and then now the concept is that internalization means you make it possible for your app to be configured to run in different languages. Localization means to make it possible for it to run one, for example, Vietnamese, right? So here's the most important methods, and mostly you only need to know the first one. It's when you make the website display in a different language, mostly you translate the text into that language. So we have a helper called translate. And then, however, sometimes the format of the date for my format of time, uh, then you also need to display that you know month before day or day before month, a comma or space, right? So that's date and time, a.m. or twenty-four hours. So they provide these two methods, and then they can, you can also use the shorter version. So I18N is a module that implement these these methods, and this is one of the most powerful. Internalization framework uh, is quite advanced. Um, if uh, some of you know um, from from the Linux world, they, it's called the most um, the, one of the popular one from the really old days. It's called this get text, and that's that's the idea. And all um, web framework kind of use the same idea. So let's set up for our application, right? So I have the project right here. I want to add a, a drop down maybe right here at the top to, to switch between the two languages. So what elements should we should we use for that? I'll use a um, a drop down. So I'm gonna use uh, Bootstrap for this component uh, documentation. It's quite hard to see where uh, documentation components and drop down, right? So there are two ways you can put a flag, and I think this this may work fine. You click here and then you choose the next language. So let's do that. I'm copying this this uh, guy right here, and I'll place it. In our layout, layout file, application.layout, we all know this by now. And I'll place it right before. So let's I have a diff right here. And then I'll put this drop down. Sorry. Oops. Looks pretty ugly. Uh, let's, let's try again. Right here. Now, this action. Here's, here's where we say the current language. So I'm just going to say English, for example. 
and here are the items in the drop down so I only need two items right so I'll use one of this and change this to um, what we call it language and we'll, we'll, we'll put a loop in it so in here I have um, between English and Vietnamese language okay so oops, not that one great it looks it looks okay so now if we switch to this we should be able to switch to the language we want now the first thing that come to mind is that when you say English what is what English is that how many countries in the world actually speak English there are a lot right so that's why when we learn about uh, um, internal um, the languages here we actually learn something called locale and and the locale is we learn there's a string format so it will be e n dash so there, there are a lot of discussion around this what we know is that if you see this e n dash u s it means American English e n dash uh, UK um, um, where is it? A GB is Greater Bri uh, Great Britain right so what is Vietnamese? is it VN or VI? right so to Rails we don't tell Rails English or Vietnamese we actually tell it the these two characters okay so we have to set this character so basically I need a better string so I'm gonna put it somewhere I'll explain later but maybe I'll have a method called language options in here we call it's a hash from what is the hash that's in Swift uh, this hash is basically if it's English I'll take it to this locale language English locale uh, locale I don't know um, Ian right so I just use user dot language options it's uh, but you can put it in in a different place you can change your mind afterwards I'm just putting it in a class right in a model so now when I have this now and in here I actually change it to user dot language options language okay and this is where I'll just use the Rails helper, it's faster, right? So I put a link to the link text is language. Now this is interesting. I'm just submitting back to my current page, but I'm passing locale uh, locale. Right? And what is the class name? Drop down item, right? So I put drop down item. Does that seem okay? So let's try again. I click on this and I click on Vietnamese. Notice it, it changes this to that. Now for this app, when it renders this page, for it to know what language it's using, we actually have to tell, we're going to go to application controller. This is the start, right? Before it go to the uh, photos controller, photos controller inherit subclass from application controller so that we actually say before action set locale right and this is a private method set no can someone guess how we where we set the info from it's from this guy right and so the way to do it is 18n dot locale equals right yeah now to be more careful, you don't want to set it if it doesn't exist, right? Or if it's empty. So I'll do that. Okay? And down here, actually, it's going to be a little ugly here, but I want to display the current locale. So it's not English, but it'll be E, N, or V, N. Oh, great. So that's the first thing we run into. Um, say VI is not a valid locale. So 
to fix this, we have to know that for each Rails uh, application, we have a list of available locales. And right now, it's just only EM. We go into our environment file, uh, our config slash application file, and we tell it to set more. Notice this line over here. We can set a few locale configuration, but I'm allowing more than one locale right here. So say VN and EN. If I run this again, it doesn't support it. Then I suspect that because I need to restart. When you change the application.rb file, most of the time, sometimes it's smart enough to reload, but most of the time you have to change. So notice if I change this to English, it's English, Vietnamese, right? Great. So I already have this set as this locale. Now, let's see what's happening here. I'm trying to go to English, but so this should be a word in English, uh, in Vietnamese, right? So I'm going to show you what's being rendered right now. All right, so this is timeline. And right now, we just render text. The way to use locale is to use the translate method. So let's go to the layout. Where's the word timeline? Timeline, here, right? Now, we don't use static text anymore. So we call translate. But you never use translate. You use something like this. So I say timeline. It means that, hey, use the, the right word in that language for timeline. OK? Let's run this. It looks the same. But if you look here, translation missing, right? And if I want to be really careful, I can actually go style in the application here and say, hey, for any guys that say translation missing, Please, maybe make it red so it's easy for me to see. Great. So this is, I have one right here. So let's fix it. So to support many languages, the way Rails set up is to put it under config, locales, and the language file. Okay, let me switch back to English for you for a second. It's still complain. It's still red. But if I go in into this file, right, we can read the instruction here. So if you use T hello, you have to have hello down here. So basically I say timeline, timeline. And if I do that here and reload, it works. It actually smart enough to reload the, the, um, the uh, YAML file. And we're going to do the same thing, but we have to create the file. Right? The file's not here for Vietnamese. So I create that file. Config slash locale slash vi.yaml. And in here we have vi um, timeline. What is it in Vietnamese? Okay. Zhao. Thời gian. Alright, so Charles, you just learned a new language. Uh, Alright, so if I change this, we change this back to this. Now, this is a new file. So, see, it's not smart enough. Rails is not smart enough. This language. Uh, Rails is not smart enough to. I'm saving it. I'm hoping that Rails is smart enough, but it's not. Right, so we have to, because it's a new file, it hasn't loaded that file into memory. There's a list of files to refresh. Excellent. So every time you have the word timeline, it says this. Now, that's some success right there. Now, sometimes if you use the word timeline in different places, you may want to use it differently. That's called namespacing. Has anyone heard of namespacing before? So it's just like a class name, right? So we, we'll have to get to that. Now let's, let's convert this, the same thing over here. And I'll talk about namespacing right now with the word like. So let's convert the like button. How do we do that? We go to photos index, right? And in there we go to this photo partial. Photos partial. 
Okay, can someone guess how we we going to fix this? Put a T on it. Okay, and usually you put lowercase. That's the name of like variable, right? And then if I do this again, I get this. Now. Here's a different way that if I should like, it means that it expects there's a file in locales. Uh, are we being in Vietnamese? So I put like. What is it? Charles know this. Oh, not Chinese. Okay. Take, right? Now this is going to get interesting. So take is there. That's good. And I have to do this likes count, right? How do we do it for plural? We have one likes, that's wrong, right? We should do plural, plural, uh, plural, uh, pluralize, uh, like. Uh, this is when things get interesting, right? How do you turn this into Vietnamese? Do you do this? Yeah? How about this one? <laughs> how, how do we do that? It's tricky, right? So here's a, diff here's a new way we learned with the new syntax. So you can actually do, uh, I will call this whole thing likes count and, and I pass in a variable. So count, how, what is it? Photo dot lights count right and one more time if we we do this here this is just lights count so we have to put a lights count here so here you can actually do count not ruby way it's a percentage here will be uh oh, sorry okay Is that good? So can we handle more than when so Vietnamese is interesting. We only we don't care about plural, do we? But what about English? I actually need to do the same thing now. If I use this and I change to back to English. This is something you learn it's going to be really cool right here. So let's copy like is just like. <laughs> likes count I cannot do this right because it may be one or two so on this you can actually do when this zero you can actually say something when it's one you can actually say value like and not and then when it's other, this is how Rails do pluralize. So um, value likes, right? So technically, zero is fine, but in some languages you need all of them. So to give you an example, I'll run this over here. And what's what is it saying? It's saying value, but it should be count, right? Uh, so this should be count. It has to be the same. If I say value, up here has to say value. Great. So, so that's a new thing. Uh, we just learned about that syntax. Now next is the ability to do namespacing. And that is with uh, scoping. It's called scoping for when you scope, you put a period in each, each place. To understand this, I'm going to show you another file that we have in this lo locale. It's called, uh, did anyone see that in the locale what file we have in there? Device. Right? So let's take a look at this file. Device, under device, you have confirmation, confirmed. Okay? 
So you can actually test this out. When you do i18n dot device uh, dot t device dot confirmations dot confirmed, what do we get? If I press enter, your email has been successfully confirmed. If I make a typo, it will say translation missing, right? So here, it's not like I can just do confirmed. Because it has to be in the same, uh, same spot, uh, same, same. It has to have the same prefix. So this allow you to define a lot of text without collision, right? With device. So this is what language are we at right now? That's en. So as when I put it to vi, and I do the same thing for up here, right? It will be missing because this it's looking for VI. Okay, now let's put one thing up here called photos. So photo index. We need a title. This page doesn't have a title, so it's, we can say photos. But let's also write it with the international, you know, not interna internationalization mindset. I put photos here. You already know this photos mean just this, this one word. Now if I put this right here, something interesting happened. Can someone guess the the full string, the name at uh, the scope for it? Translation missing. Photos dot index dot photos. So this help you group all the translation in one action. So how do I do this in in my Locale file. You can actually have more folder, and then in that folder, you can have the photos controller, photos dot yaml. But for the sake of this, basically I can do photos. That's a photos controller index, and photos, right? Pictures. If I do that, and here it will be able to find it. Pictures. You do the same thing. Now the cool thing is any other thing you do up here, uh, any let's say you want to display something on a photo page, you can actually use this dot, let's see, uh, for example, here will be uh, view all the popular photos, right? View all the most popular photos. So. To turn this into a new language, I have to take this whole string and I say view all popular and down in the locales English, this one I will do it for view all popular and it's the string that we had just now, right? So. Can someone just think of an advantage we have right here? Why do we put everything in one file or in one folder config locales? If you don't want to do it, you can have someone else do it, right? You can hire translator. You're the programmer, you can just that person can read all of this and do it for you. And that's why if you do use device, right? You realize that oh this is a lot of Vietnamese to type. Now no no problem. Just search for this file. I mean it's right and people have done it before. So all I have to do is just copy this file. Right now. Uh, that's the English version, right? Oh this person is too lazy, he didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here Vietnamese device uh, vi.yaml here right maybe this person is is cooler yes right so I go to raw I copy and paste and create this file so I'm going to drop this file right into my to my folder so what folder is it config locales remember we have device here I just drop it right down here now if I sign out and I'm using Vietnamese and I'm sign out then I should be able to 
Not yet, huh? Ooh. I should be able to use this. Except that I haven't restarted my server. Let's try again. We are in Vietnamese right now, right? Let's sign in. Okay. Who knows what the problem is? Who knows what the problem is? When I sign in on this page, it was back to English. Because I can only tell when I'm in Vietnamese if I have this. Right? So how do I make sure this stay? Store it. Okay, you can store it in session, right? So, but here I am in Vietnamese, so if I click log out here, it works, right? So we, we will go, we are going to solve the problem of this one. I want to stay in Vietnamese for a long time. So before we do that, I'm just going to move the, uh, the uh, language bar to the right hand side. Where is it? Down here, locale. Let's move this to the right hand side. Uh, it looks nicer that way. Well, maybe, maybe just put a diff and margin right, right? Uh, no, what is it? Text align, right? So there's some space. I'm going to put a time up here as well. So we'll put time uh, when we learn about time zone. Now. So what's next is to make this persistent, right? To make this persist over many requests. So to do that, I'll introduce us to a few ways to do it. Uh, so setting and pa passing the locale. So you want to keep all the requests, right? To stay in Vietnamese, right? I want to highlight this paragraph. It's okay, if you really want to do it, you can store up the session in the cookie. So let's go to application controller. You can do it here. If browse local, you don't just do this, right? You can just do session locale <coughs> equals to this guy. Just like what we did with user sign in, right? And you always load you always load this from the session. Now, this is okay, but they say that um, do not do this, right? Because if you want your app to be restful, every time you visit the, the, the page, especially if it's a public page, if you send this link to your friend, you need to know is that a Vietnamese page or an English page. If you switch to an English page, right, you want that URL to also contain that information. That's why we have locale. Uh, slash uh, um, equals VN here, right? So that's the idea. Now, one way to do this, let's look at the ugly way. So they say don't do this, right? So how do we do that? So setting, again, he, it says setting is easy. We do that, uh, we just did this before, but there are many ways to get the information, whether you're using English or Vietnamese. Um, does anyone know some popular websites how they how they decide if you're using Vietnamese or English? Domain, okay. So how do we do that? So it would be let's say if I'm um, code a photo, if I do that vn, right or dot com, so you can do that. And in that approach, it's not as interesting, but you it's here. Extract locale from TLD. TLD is top level domains. So if you have go to school.it, maybe that's Italian. Dot PL is like is it Polish? But the idea is that your host name here, you can split and you get the last guy. And from there you decide what locales you want to show to the user. Right? Let's look at something a little bit easier, uh, more interesting. Because this one you have to be able to buy this domain name. Okay? What if I want to do vn.localhost? 3,000. Does anyone know how to do this? Names. So if I do VN, normally it shouldn't work, 
Can you try on your laptop? It will not because lo only localhost is understood, right? So to do that, this requires a little bit of uh, Linux uh, stuff, but it's really easy. You go to etc host, and you can add. Actually, why do I? Ha why does it work for me? <laughs> <laughs> You should be able to add like under one, this one, right? And then you can do anything. And localhost, vi.localhost. So that's one way for you to make sure that it goes here. So let's see if this works. Yeah, I have some setting that basically make anything work. <laughs> but if it doesn't work for you, you have to do this, okay? So, so that's one way. Another way, actually, some of you may not realize we someone create this if you have the internet local virtual host dot me is the same as your local host so you can do LV this is the laziest way if you do this it goes to localhost colon 3000 so now you can have whatever domain you want VI that also works okay so how do we get that information I'm going to just use this for now okay VI now let's let's get this and this website give us a little information right here you can call subdomain and get the first one so I'm going to code that I'm going to code it right here uh, my locale now is actually if request dot subdomain right uh, just the locale equals dot first and I'll just set it without error checking first okay so I'm, I'm going to this guy and notice this change to VI if I go to this EN it changed to EN what if <laughs> what if I make this uh, what's another language Oscar where are you <laughs> oh it's okay this is not supported so we have to to check right so we will do available locale if it include locale then you do this if not how do we do it yeah let's set it to default okay so there is one what is default i at the end of default locale so now if I go here it should go to English right Thank you. So this should go to English. Well, this is not nice. Take me back to where? It should take me to this guy. So technically, you might want to redirect to uh, root path, right? Locale. What is it? Root path locale. So I don't have to set this locale basically. There are many ways, but just exp exp explaining the different way we are ex approaching this problem. So if I, it's going to this, right? So it's a little tricky. <laughs> okay, so that's the second way. What's the third way? So in my lecture notes, I cover a few ways. We set the locale, and we can use the subdomain you can revisit this another advantage of using lvh.me is that in your test you can also use this you run it on your test server using this this one your test server you cannot change the configuration right okay sometimes you use subdomain for different reasons if you have a company name you want to put it as a subdomain name that's also a good way to do it right so then you can just load the subdomain and then you only load the users for the company. Now, we're covering a few other ways to get the, the locale. You can actually allow a user to decide what language the user wants. So that's why you add a column for the user, right? Now, another way is to check from the browser to check from the browser, the browser actually, when you send a request from the browser, it sends this information from the browser header. If you check this, accept language, it's a default language that the browser 
uh, you know, sometimes Google asks you, Google Translate asks you, do you want to set this language to ABCD? They check this value, right? You can use JavaScript to check this value. You can use Ruby to check this value. Now you can check this and decide whether to display English or Vietnamese, right? And of course, you can also check the user's IP. Remember, if you use device, you have the last sign-in IP. You can also have like, you know, their, uh, it keep track of a few IP fields. Last sign in, right? Cur current IP. So you can check that. Oh, where are you? Is are you using a China IP or using a, an American I IP, right? So you can use that. Now this method may be slower. It's not as good. Some people use VPN, and sometimes um, if you use a an API for it, then it's slow. If you use a dictionary, then you have to load a lot of data into your memory. Let's let's try something a little cooler. So basically, every time I go to the website, I want to go to either slash v en or slash vi. So this is a little bit more advanced with our um, with our um, uh, route. So I'm going to go back to the simple locale setting that we did. Just that. Okay. Let's go to the route. And what if I do it this way? Anytime I want you to give me a locale so when I do this it means I expect params locale there and I want you to give me a locale every time you access my web page so even even here right so localhost right the root is not if I go to photos it's not accepted, but if I go to en slash photos, then it should work. Except I make a tiny mistake. Uh, where should I go? So scope. Let's see scope. No. We'll find the scope here. So I'm, I think I'm okay, right? Scope and. It say no routes match for the likes one. That's okay. Right. So here's the problem. Uh, here's a new one. So it in this one it doesn't have a locale and it it try to pass the photo as the first argument. So there's another thing that you can use is default URL options. So you always append the current locale to it. Does it make sense? Let's say when you create a new URL, always append this guy. Put it in application controller. So let's say if I do that on my application controller, uh, paste it right here. Okay. So you see en vi, right? That works quite nicely. Uh, but we need to do a little bit more and this one is a little complicated it means if you it goes from top to bottom so after if you enter just photos right none of this worked right so go down here so star path mean anything and then path so right if you go to anything photos let's redirect to the default locale and then you pass that variable back in here does it make sense so if I copy this line in my route file so down here if you give me a star path I will make sure you redirect me to the default locale so this will be i181 default locale and here's how you pass the variable path back in. Does it make sense? This one, I have a few constraints here, but I'll explain in a second. Now, if this works, they redirect here, and then after that, it will go back to the lo this matching again. So let's try. Right. Get path. It should redirect here. 
I am not seeing that video like uh, and if it's also if it's empty I'm just com gonna copy this oh you do that regex in top regex so for the scope locale so on the very first line yeah so that second argument is avail is um, possible values for that right so it's right otherwise it will always be a locale yeah. so here we, we will do that it has to be either en or vi right so this is the available um, matches. So either VN or EI. So I do this now. Do you think this is going to pass it through? It has to be, right, right, let's look at the scope again. Scope. If I pass, what routes is it getting to? Locales photos. It's still matching the wrong locale. So let's restart the server. <laughs> mm. Okay, so there's something wrong here, right? So Rails route guide is our uh, Bible. So if I not look at scope, right? Basically, there's a constraint. You can can tell the scope to. Oh, you have to pass it. Should I call a constraint or? I'm trying to find more scope examples. I think because Rails update the API, so that may be yeah, constraint. So maybe I'll just try real quick and then constraints. Uh, I need to pass the name of the. Oh yeah, it works. <laughs> So every time, right, uh, it just keeps reappending until it's too much. Yes, and and I need another constraint somewhere. I think at the top, you have to constraint. The constraint is that locale needs to be, like, it's a hash, it's a locale, it's that. So right now, if the... So I think, I think you just put locale in front. Like constraints is a hash. Oh, okay. Locale. Yeah. So right now, nothing ever matched, right? So, okay. Alright, so I have to go back to this guy and try photos one more time. So, that's very smooth, right? Thank you, Charles. So, basically, that is actually my preferred way. It seems very straightforward. You fix the URL for people and then you send it out. Okay? So, we also cover how we can do the like and unlike. Uh, let's, let's support this guy. Add a local column to user. And I'll also add a time zone. 